Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to continue something we've started in the past and that involves this Dell Dimension 2400. In a past video, we set up Windows 3.11 to run on this Dell Dimension 2400. And today we're going to set up sound via an ES1370 sound card that you see here. So let's get right to it. So the first thing that we need to do is to download some drivers. Let me show you how and where to get drivers for the ES1370 sound card for Windows 3.11 and DOS. To get drivers for the ES1370 for Windows 3.11, there are essentially two steps. First, we have to find the drivers themselves, and second, we need to find an ECW sound file to accompany the drivers. So here in Google, I've done a search for ES1370 Windows 3.11 drivers, which takes me to a Vogons link. If we scroll down the page here, we can see some great conversations that have occurred over this topic. And eventually we see a link here that says that Wayback has saved a copy of the drivers here. We'll go ahead and click on that link, which will take us to this page for Gateway GP6-300 drivers. And if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to see sound downloads. And then here we go, 1370 chipset, Windows 3.1 or 3.x and MS-DOS. So we'll go ahead and download that file. So the next thing we're going to need is basically an ECW file, which has all the MIDI sound mappings. To find that, I've done a Google search for Vogon's vintage driver library, and we'll click here. And then we'll go see if we can find Ensenic under the sound devices. And then to the very top, we should have a couple of different wave set files that are available for this card. The eight megabyte is going to give us the greatest quality, so we'll go ahead and download that. And that actually downloads as a seven zip file. So I happen to have this unzipper called Unixtract installed. We'll just go ahead and do a Unixtract. Uh-oh, let's try again. Well, it worked anyway. And now we have Unixtracted the EAPCI8M.ECW file which we're going to go ahead and rename to default.ecw before we transfer over uh, for reasons which will be apparent. So with those drivers downloaded, I've copied them over uh, to my Raspberry Pi, and you can see that they're listed here. We have that first driver that we downloaded from the Wayback Gateway site, as well as the ECW file that we downloaded from the Vilgon's Vintage Driver site. So the first thing we're going to do is take this default.ecw file and copy it to the system directory on drive C. And next we're going to copy the install drivers to drive C. All right. Now with the drivers copied over, we can go ahead and launch that install file. And it's a little bit wonky. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Let me go ahead and double click that. And it's going to open up things and put them in this cabs directory. And now that's complete. Now we can come over here to the cabs directory, disk one, and run setup. That'll take us through the setup process. Next, C drive Windows temp. Wait a minute. Well, that's weird. Bear with me. <laughs> Next. And what it's basically doing is taking those three files and combining them into one big installation file. Okay. So now we can go to Windows temp. There's our installer. Now we can double click on that. And finally, it'll install this was pretty commonplace back in the day for all non-Sound Blaster cards. In my opinion, it seems like their installation programs were never straightforward, and Ensunic was no different. Okay, so now somehow we've ended up with a self-extracting archive, so let's click Setup. It's once again going to unzip files. It feels like we've been here before. And run a Setup Wizard again. Okay, next. Let's do remove and install. It's going to install to this EAPCI directory. 
Here we can actually see it copying. The first file I copied was a two megabyte wave type, wave uh, synth file. But we're ready to restart. Boot into DOS. You can see that it's calling this bat file that was added to autoexec bat and initialization is complete, which is great. So now we should be set up for both DOS and Windows. Let's go run a DOS game. Oh, absolutely horrific MIDI. <laughs> and that's one of the downfalls of this card. That's all we can do. That's the eight megabyte file and it's just awful. But hey, at least it's, it just gets worse. At least it's sound in MS-DOS, okay? Let's go to Windows. I think it's gonna be a little better. We'll type Win there to launch Windows. Hey, we have sound. And hey, look, we have a mixer. Let's click on it. Ah, oh well, we tried. So that doesn't seem to work so well. Once again, not as well integrated as you would hope. I'm just gonna delete that. Let's go launch Chip's Challenge. And lo and behold, you can hear we have decent MIDI and Wave as well. If we turn the MIDI off, we have just the sound effects. So, okay, at least we get that. Very good. Now, one thing I will show you is, even though the mixer doesn't seem to work right, you can actually still make changes. If we go to DOS, go to the Windows directory and edit system.ini, at the bottom of the file should be some settings for EAPCI. And down there, you can actually make changes if you know what you're changing. And another place that you could probably go is into the actual driver section under control panel. And there should be an audio PCI driver there. And you also have the option to make changes. And perhaps this is the easier way. In this case, things are pretty much set up the way that they need to be. We're getting MIDI and we're getting wave sound. So we're good to go. But definitely wanted to show you uh, those options. And of course there's a help file as well. Not sure how much it really tells you, but it looks like you can click through here and it'll give you some help with the different various things that you want to know. So kind of cool. So there you have it. We're all set up with good Windows 311 sound and terrible DOS sound, but I guess it's better than nothing. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, definitely feel free to subscribe. If you want to see more updates that are coming, there'll be more to come. Click that subscription bell if you want to get notified of future videos that we create. Uh, if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs down. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.